Feliz Navidad, my friends. I hope the holiday is treating you well. I would like you to join me as I regale you with a reading of the holiday classic, A Die Hard Christmas. That's right. <sighs> Grab your hot cocoa, favorite blanket, and gather round. A Die Hard Christmas, written by Doogie Horner, illustrated by the illustrious J.J. Harrison. Twas the night before Christmas, and up in the tower, everyone was partying except one wallflower. John McLean missed his wife. Things just weren't the same since Holly had moved west and changed her last name. He tried to win her back, but still she said no, while unbeknownst to them, there was trouble below. A truck had pulled up, and who should disembark but 14 men whose intentions were dark. They spoke not a word and unloaded big crates. They cut the phone lines and locked all the gates. Carl swept the ground floor, shooting every guard dead, while visions of bearer bonds danced in his head. So cute. John took off his shoes, making fists with his toes. It actually worked. Well, what do you know? When out in the lobby, there arose such a clatter. He sprung to the door to see what was the matter. When what do his wondering eyes should appear? Holy crap, there are terrorists here. John hid under a table where no one could see and watched Hans question Mr. Takagi. I'm going to count to three. There will not be a four. Give me the codes to open the vault door. I don't know the codes, so go ahead and shoot. Okay, said Hans Gruber and ruined Takagi's suit. Right. John tried to call the cops by pulling an alarm, but instead called the bad guys who tried to cause him harm. But John killed Tony, who had very small feet, and sent him to the terrorists as a yuletide treat. He put a Santa hat on the German and eyes all aglow, wrote, Now I have a machine gun. How, how, how? Carl was furious. Tony was his brother. He chased John across the roof, and they shot at each other. John was able to escape through the ventilation shafts. Come out to the coast, he sighed. We'll have a few laughs. At Nakatomi Tower, Sergeant Powell appeared. He checked the whole lobby and saw nothing weird. He was pulling away, but didn't get far when Marco landed on the hood of his car. Powell drove away backwards, screaming in fright. Welcome to the party, pal, John yelled with delight. More police arrived, the FBI and a SWAT team, but Hans didn't mind, it was all part of his scheme. More rapid than eagles, his henchmen they came, and he radioed and shouted and called them by name. Now Eddie, now James, now Franco, now Uli, on Fritz and on Carl, Hair long and unruly. They shot the SWAT tank with a surface to air missile and knocked it away like the down of a thistle. Now John McLean was angry indeed. He blew up two terrorists and called them jerkweed. Ellis told Hans, Booby, I'm your white knight. Hans shot him dead, giving the hostages a fright. Don't do coke. Hans went to go check on the explosives fuse and saw that poor John wasn't wearing any shoes. John fled from Carl and Hans, but alas, he had to run barefoot over sharp broken glass. His feet, how they hurt, his soles oh so bloody. John crawled to the bathroom and called his good buddy. John was weary and ready to throw in the towel until he got a pep talk from Sergeant Al Powell. Powell was chubby and plump, a right jolly old cop, and he trusted the cowboy in the tattered tank top. But a reporter was probing into McLean's life and revealed that Holly was actually John's wife. Hans quickly flipped over the gold picture frame. It's a pleasure to meet you, 
Mrs. McLean. His clothes all tarnished with ashes and soot, John staggered to the roof, bloody and barefoot. The explosives were wired to the rooftop with care in hopes that the hostages would soon would be there. John warned everyone the roof would soon blow as the chopper strafed him with high-powered ammo. Around his waist, he tied a fire hose tight and screaming an oath jumped into the night. He dangled in the air and gritted his teeth while flames encircled the tower like a wreath. Fiercely fighting his way back inside, John yelled out, Hans! He was done trying to hide. He limped to the vault like an old man on crutches, only to find Holly in his filthy clutches. John dropped his gun, put his hands to his head. It seemed he and Holly soon would be dead. But with a secret gun taped to his back, John shot Hans in a surprise attack! Ten points. Hans fell out the window, still holding Holly's arm, and slowly, deliberately raised his firearm. The tenacious villain held on by his nails till John unhooked Holly's watch and said, Happy trails! Barabons fluttered like fresh fallen snow as Holly embraced her blood spattered bow. So, Merry Christmas to all, be kind to one another, and most of all, Yippee Kaye, motherfucker. Thank you. And remember, the moral of the story is on Christmas Eve, you should be home with your kids, not at a Christmas party. <laughs>